The North American Fur Trade, a historical humans production. The North American fur trade was one of the most important widespread economic drivers for North Americans, both the colonists and the indigenous populations, along with populations in Europe. It began as a system to trade goods and services between the colonists and the local indigenous populations, but due to the sheer amount of money and wealth involved, it quickly grew to become a global enterprise. Three European nations initially established trading posts to take advantage of this lucrative market, the French, the English, and the Dutch. They each established trading posts and forts all across the continent and frontier in an effort to maximize their profitability. However, due to a change in fashion stylings, coupled with the rapid depletion of local wildlife populations, led to significant ecological destruction and the eventual end of the fur trade. The fur trade system initially began with French explorer and part-time fur trader Jacques Cartier as a part of his voyages into the Gulf of the St. Lawrence in the 1530s and 1540s. Cartier began the fur trade along the St. Lawrence River in Canada, focusing on smaller furs used as trimming and adornments. He ignored the pelt that eventually became the driving force, the beaver pelt. This didn't really lead to any significant boosts until later in the 16th century when Bosque fishermen were able to dry fish caught in the New World and transport them back to Europe. They would find local harbors with enough wood to dry the large amounts of fish that they caught. They would then be in contact with local indigenous groups who would trade their indigenous created beaver robes to the Europeans in exchange for metal items. Once the fishermen returned home, local hat makers converted the pelts into felt which sparked a new revolution of beaver felt hats in the public fashion. The trade became an enterprise in earnest when Samuel de Champlain founded Quebec as a part of New France in 1508. Champlain recognized the value in working directly with the tribes and created alliances with a number of local tribes, the Huron and Algonquin, to name a few. The wealth wasn't exactly evenly distributed. A few select fur traders and France themselves gained significant portions of wealth. Some Métis or mixed indigenous natives also attempted to join the fur trade as independents. The trade shifted the way local tribal populations lived too. They began using iron axes, brass kettles, cloth, and firearms. They also would trade furs for rum and whiskey, which led to substance abuse problems. As with any good exploitative business, Competition quickly followed. The Beaver Wars, which were a series of fights and skirmishes that began when the Iroquois Confederacy attacked their neighbors over fur pelts. The Iroquois were known to raid their neighbors at the best of times, but when it came to trade, they took it up to a whole new level. They displaced the Mohicans for exclusive rights to trade with the Dutch in upstate New York. By 1640, they had exhausted their own supply for furs so they attacked other nations who would work as middlemen for the Europeans. They attacked the Wendat and abducted thousands, especially as the Iroquois themselves had lost significant portions of their population due to smallpox and other European diseases. The Iroquois had battled with the French in 1609, 1610, and 1615. It wasn't until the Iroquois suffered significant losses that they made peace with the French in 1667. The trade naturally began expanding westward as explorers Jacques Marquette and La Salle explored the Great Lakes region along with the Ohio and Mississippi River Valleys. The French would then boost their claims to this region by building and creating new forts along the way. By this point, many natives had heard of the trade and acted as middlemen. The French in turn changed their tactics and began utilizing this brand new form of trade called diplomacy where they would negotiate with the local traders and make alliances. This was until everything changed. The French and Iroquois, despite having made peace, did not quash all of the negative attitudes towards each other. Mainly, the Iroquois continuously clashed with other native groups as they fought for control of the trade, but they were also trading with the English in Albany, New York. The Iroquois were winning battles though, and eventually prevented French trade in the Mississippi River Valley. The French responded by declaring war on the Iroquois in 1684. When King Louis gave the order to humble the Five Nations once and for all and to teach them to respect France. They eventually made peace in 1701 
when the French wore down the Five Nations due to their significantly larger resource pool. The effect that the fur trade had was significant. It began almost by accident, by fishermen who were trying to utilize another resource and stumbled across it. This directly led to the settlement and building of forts, trading posts, and eventually cities in the region to help support and sustain local fur traders with European trade goods. It shaped both policy between the colonial nations and indigenous nations, along with policies that happened in their subsequent countries of Canada and the United States. The two most devastating effects, though, were the large toll on local populations of both beaver and indigenous tribes as they both felt the effect of purposeful hunting by Europeans and warfare. And if you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to leave a like and to share with your friends. Thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video.